Hello, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're taking a look at the Atom Stack A5 Pro. But first of all, roll those credits. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Check out the link in the video description for a free trial or check out the end of this video for a little bit more information about them. But let's dive straight in. So this is the Atom Stack A5 Pro. It is a 5.5 watt laser diode. Um, you'll have to forgive us because we are not experts on lasers on this channel. This is the first laser we've had. And I have to say that right out of the gate, I'm pretty addicted to it. So um, this is, we did a little live stream on it to show it working and things like that. Um, we've used it a fair amount since then. We've actually started engraving some things and we've started doing different stuff with it. And we've sort of played about with a few things for the video. We're actually waiting on some larger wood to come from Amazon so we can do some more cool stuff with it. But let's go through some of the specifications of this. So this is a 5.5 watt laser diode laser. Um, and it is for, it's got a build volume of 410 by 400. Um, all aluminium frame. The frame is really sturdy. If you check out our, um, our unboxing video, you'll see this was actually really easy to set up. Um, Atom Stack have got quite a lot of different lasers. That they, uh, that they offer. This particular one is $379.99 on Amazon at the moment. Um, it's about the same in pounds if you, uh, if you go to British Amazon as well. And it's really good. I, 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 really, I really like the way that it works. It's super easy to set up. Um, we are using Lightburn, which is the, uh, which is the software that one of the pieces of software this works with. Lightburn isn't freeware, so you do have to buy a copy of that. It's not expensive. I think it's like $40 or something like that. And it's super worth it. It's really easy to use, really easy to export stuff with, really easy to figure out all of your settings. If you don't want to pay for that, you can use Laser GRBL, which is a freeware piece of software. Um, I found that a little harder to use, but it's dealer's choice. You know, you, you get used to whatever you're using and then you go from there. Um, I mean, the big piece that we made was obviously was obviously this globe. And we'll do some close-ups in a minute. But basically, this is a, a cut globe that's also got sort of... A, it's a square... It's not really a globe. It's a square sort of atlas kind of thing um, with, uh, with lots of grid lines engraved on it and things like that. Looks really cool. And, uh, and all went on this base. This was cut out of three and a half mil ply. Um, and then we've done some engraving on um, some coasters. And we also managed to engrave a spatula, which will show up close in a second. Um, the one thing I would say is I do feel like this needs to have the air assist. So air assist, for those who don't know, is uh, it's tubes that go down the side of, uh, of the laser and they basically blow directly onto the material. And it cools the material enough to mean you can cut deeper without burning the wood. Um, there don't really seem to be any sort of universal settings for things because all the wood densities are different and all of the thicknesses are different and things like that. So for example, this being three and a half mil ply, um, we actually had a bad issue where when it was cutting through the glue, for those who, again, for those who may not know, the glue that's in plywood um, actually contains formaldehyde. Now, luckily we're in our workshop using this, uh, which has full ventilation. I was wearing uh, PPE protection as well, but, I didn't necessarily know that when I started uh, when I started engraving it, so that very nearly was an issue. Um, one thing I really don't like about what they say on the website is they actually say that because they include there's like a little cover that goes over the laser, a red cover that goes over it, and they say that because they've got that red cover, you don't need to use 
eye protection. Now we have these glasses here, which are from OPT lasers, and they're very different to a lot of them. So they, they wrap around so that when you put them on, there's no gap between your face. So they are nice and snug to the face, and it means there's nowhere a laser beam can get in to potentially damage your eyes. PPE when you're dealing with stuff like this is just as serious as when you're using resin or when you're using anything else. It's your eyesight guys, so don't take any chances with stuff like that. Always wear eye protection. Um, this particular machine doesn't have a screen or the ability to print with an offline SD card. Atomstack do have an external screen that they sell as an extra. We don't have that. Um, and that allows you to print without connecting to, without being connected to your laptop. You slice it onto an SD card like you would with a 3D printer, and then you export the G code, you put it on here, and then with the screen, you would be able to do that. With this, it actually has to be connected to your PC or laptop all the time. Um, it just means planning your workspace a little differently. So you sort of have to, you have to make sure that you've got enough space for the laser in a ventilated area, and then the ability to sort of take out a, a, a USB cut, a USB lead, and plug it into your laptop as well. So it does make it a little bit more sort of complicated, I suppose. To to sort of it just means it's extra steps, it's extra things that you need. Um, we started off by taking some 12 mil plywood and we engraved into it, as you can see, we've had a few mishaps, uh, we engraved into it this grid. So this lines up perfectly with the sides of this, um, of this particular machine. And what it means is when this goes on here, we know where to place our, um, our wood so that we can measure out where it is and then we can map that up to where it is on the laptop. And that means we're always gonna know where our material is. Um, that was really, really useful. It helped us to understand where the boundaries of the machine were. Um, something else, and maybe it's just because we've come from 3D printers, but something else that seems like it's missing from this is it doesn't have a home switch. So you manually move this to home, and then it's at home. But... If, it, if you leave it here, that's where it will start. So when you turn the machine on, wherever this is, is where it thinks zero is. So you have to manually move it to home. It's not a big deal, but it seems like an odd thing to have to do. Like a limit switch is like, especially if you buy them in bulk, it's like 50p. Like it can't be that hard to have integrated a limit switch into this. But by the by, it doesn't really affect the functionality. It's just sort of a, a weird use thing coming from coming from 3D printers to this that, that it wouldn't have such a simple such a simple thing to implement. Um, other than that, it was pretty much assemble it and start lasering. So there really wasn't much in the way of calibration. You get a couple of acrylic tags in this that you basically put between your material and your tool head. So if you can see here, let me move this out of the way. So if you can see here, there's a couple of wing nuts that are on the back. You undo those wing nuts, and then this tool head will move up. You just undo those, there we go. This will move up or down, and then all you do is you put your material underneath it, and you take your little bit of perspex, you put that underneath it, and then that's the height that it needs to be that it needs to be at to print for this material. You tighten the wing nuts and then you're away. And it really is as simple as that. That's all the calibration you need to do. It is genuinely very, very easy to use. I cannot argue with the ease of use. Because there isn't that standard table of this, these are the settings for three and a half mil ply or these are the settings for one mil birchwood. There are a few different things that you have to just do a bit of trial and error with. So it'll, I mean, these sort of, these are one and a half mil birchwood. And to be honest with you, um, they're super cheap. So like 25 of these are about eight pound on our Amazon. Um, 
The plywood was more expensive, but plywood across the world is expensive at the moment. Um, so doing a little bit of trial and error on these, pretty much use your cheapest material to figure it out. And then you, and that gives you a baseline to start from, but you'll need to do a little bit of experimentation and trial and error. Um, it's unlikely you will just buy a thing, put it under there, immediately get the settings right, and it'll be perfect the first time you do it. There is a little bit of playing about. Um, but once you know, then pretty much what I've been doing is keeping a notepad next to it so that I know when I've got a certain type of material and I'm trying to either cut or engrave, I just write the settings down for what I'm using to get the results that I want. And then that seems to seems to work pretty well. So um, we got a lot of our files from uh, two websites. So one was called Vecteasy. Um, and the other one was um, DXF, I think it was, .com or something like that. Um, I'll put the links in the video description anyway. And they're a bit like Thingiverse. So they've got loads of free models that you can go on and you can download. And they've got all sorts of things. So they've got basic designs like this. Um, although if you have Tinkercad or if you have Lightburn, it's actually pretty easy to turn pretty much any image into um, into being able to laser engrave it. It's, it's, it's actually really simple to do. It's just not that hard. Um, it's a few clicks, you trace an image. Um, you don't personally trace it, you click trace and then it will go off and, and do the thing. Um, I think I wanna show you some of the results that we had because I'm really happy with how a lot of these things turned out. So let's take a look at how some of that looks and then we'll go from there. So as you can see, this has engraved really fine details in this. I'm not sure how close I'm gonna be able to get while this still uh, while this still focuses, but this is a Spartan warrior that we did, and again, such fine lines, and that detail isn't isn't easy to do. Like I mean, it's really really fine how how thin those lines are. You've got things like this uh, dragon symbol. We did a really cool bear. And then we tried doing this. So this is quite a deep engraving. So this has actually got, I don't know if I can actually show you, but this has actually got some, some depth to that engraving. You really feel the texture. You can see that it has burned slightly. And I really feel like the air assist on this would make a real difference. Um, as well we'll take a quick look at how this came out so this is our let's pull that out so this here is our globe so you can see that this was all cut out like puzzle pieces and at the same time it went round and it engraved everything as well so there's loads of there's loads of etchings in there and there's the UK this is America's Europe, Africa's down there. And I just thought it was a really cool design of something that I really sort of like something fun to do. So as well, we managed to get this to work. So that is the Honey Badger print and paint logo. I don't know how well that's gonna come out on the, uh, on the lens there. Let's see if we can get that to focus. There we go. And that's on a steel spatula. So all you have to do with this, you have to be really careful with reflective surfaces because they can damage the laser. So you literally color this in with a, a dry erase marker. And then this was on 100% on a 600 speed and I did three passes and it came out really cool. So we can now do custom spatulas. So, I mean, you can see what this can do. Obviously, we've done some stuff on relatively small coasters. We bought quite a lot of them so that we could sort of do a lot of testing and, and playing about with a laser and things like that. This will absolutely do much, much larger stuff. So, um, so this was one of the sheets of plywood that we used. And this is sort of, uh, I think this is about 350 by 350. And admittedly, we cut this in the middle, which we didn't need to. It could have been done over at the side. Um, and, and it did a really, really good job. The biggest issue that we've had actually is not the laser, it's the material. So I don't know if you can see this, but this has got really quite a significant bow in it. 
and the material does need to be flat. So it needs to be flat to the surface because otherwise it variates the distance between the laser and the material and that changes the intensity of the burn. So you'll get some, if, if something is high, it'll be darker and if it's low, it'll be lighter. So your material isn't perfectly flat. With some of these, I actually had to basically screw them to our baseboard so that they would actually be flat. Um, and that's not an issue with the machine, that's an issue with the material that we picked because we went to sort of our local hardware store and you know a lot of their material wasn't flat because that's not really what it's supposed to be used for. Um, this does open up a whole new range of cool stuff that we can do. So we've got some plans to do some paint racks with these, we've got some plans to perhaps do some presentation stands and things like that maybe do some engravings on things to do for giveaways like hip flasks or keychains and things like that. Um, and I'm really, really impressed with how well it did. It's an objectively cheap machine. You know, this is a, this is a very powerful laser that you're getting for under 400 pounds and it's a huge build volume. Um, does this mean we're going to become a laser channel? No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, we do actually have a couple of other lasers on the way. I'm not allowed to tell you what they are, but keep an eye out on the channel for them. And we can do some comparisons with those as to how they behave uh, compared, to, compared to this and how this compares towards others. Um, I really like it. It's a new tool in our toolbox. It's a new thing that we can do stuff with and we love new things, you know, we love new technology. This is executed particularly well. It seems to use pretty high quality parts. The laser has done its job since day one. I think the one thing, so Atomstack make a bunch of accessories for these, right? There's a, there's a rotary thing you can get where you can engrave on, on round glasses or round flasks or on cans and things like that. Um, so we'd really like to get that. There is a honeycomb base plate that you can buy for this. So basically it raises this whole machine up slightly and, um, and it's, a, it's a honeycomb structure that you put into the machine and then you can actually put bolts in to, to hold your material flat. That's something that I really think people should buy because the reality is, as you can see from our baseboard, so it's great to have this because it shows you the grid, right? And you know where you're gonna place things, but you can see that where we've had extensive cuts or where things have sort of been too deep while we've been doing our testing, we've lost, you know, we've lost some of our lines because ultimately they've been, <laughs> they've been sliced by, um, by, by the laser. So the backboard got damaged. Um, and you know, and I don't want to have to keep replacing that. So it would have been good if we'd have um, if we'd have managed to have got the, uh, the the honeycomb structure because I think that's really good. I think one of the essential upgrades that we want to do to this is you can go on Amazon and you can buy an aquarium pump, and you can add air assist to these. So air assist, as I say, it's two bits of surgical PFTE tubing that go down to the side and they literally just blow on the material and they stop the material from burning. They can give you a cleaner burn so you can do deeper engraving and you get, you get more consistent results. And you can actually 3D print the air nozzle as well. So you don't need to, um, you know, you don't need to go out and buy anything particularly expensive. The pumps that you can buy are, are 10, 15 pound and then it's sort of two or three quids worth of tubing. Um, so we will more than likely end up doing that because I, I really want to see how well this can go. Um, the claim from Atomstack is that you can cut up to 12 millimeter thick material with this. Um, that is probably possible if you were to have, uh, if you were to have uh, sort of multiple, multiple passes, as in if you were to have I don't know, a hundred passes to cut through the material. I don't think it's practical and it's not something this laser would be doing every day. Um, there's only really two things that I don't yet like about lasers. So one, you have to wear your PPE. This is a class four laser. It is super dangerous. 
if if for what if somehow that laser bounces off of something and it gets you in the eye it will blind you so that's you know obviously a concern and you just need to treat it with a bit of respect the other is that you can't this isn't like 3d printing so a 3d printer you can set off a print and you can you know you can go off and there's loads of safety features to stop it from you know from destroying itself or your home right there's loads of thermal runaway cutoffs and things like that that will that will stop your 3d printer from catching fire um there really aren't that many safety features with one of these lasers it's either on or it's off there's no temperature sensors or anything like that to say oh this is getting too hot i need to shut down um there's not really, you know, there's not really a lot of safety features on this machine. Okay, they've got the they've got the shield there to stop your eyes from um, from getting getting hurt if you haven't got the glasses on, which you should have. Um, but that's my only real sort of criticism and concern at the moment. I would like to see more safety features. Now, to be fair, there are plenty of other um, lasers on the market. There's Comgro Z1 and Sculpt Funds S9 and things like that that are functionally identical to this and they also don't have those safety features. So I'm not in any way saying that this is somehow indicatively less safe than a competing um, than a competing laser. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is that when you're doing this laser engraving, it really is important that you sit down and you're there while this is on. This is not a product that you leave on, go off and make a drink, come back, and then, you know, everything's going to be fine. Um, you know, you may have accidentally hit a setting by accident that suddenly puts your um, laser up to 100%, and it may be going at a very slow speed, and it can burn and therefore, you know, catch fire to the material that it's engraving. You know, if it's engraving wood, it could absolutely do that. So that's my only, that's my only thing. It's that, it's that I'm new to lasers, I'm not, you know, I'm not confident in all of the safety features that this does have, um, and, and I feel like I can't leave this alone um, when, when, it's, when it's engraving. So, um, so that's, my only, that's my only caveat. But this machine is great, and it works, and it does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, it's certainly a, a huge competitor in the space. That's just my only concern about it. But that being said, stay here for a word from our video sponsor. Thank you very much for joining us and watching. We'll see you all soon. Stay safe. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of courses on hundreds of different topics. Everything from animation through to After Effects, Adobe Premiere, there's things on gardening, bakery, there's even some great courses on 3D printing. We've recently been using it on the channel and we've started to try and develop our skills in Adobe Premiere so we can edit and grade these, uh, these videos much better than we do. So for example, we've recently done a course on color grading with Fred Treveno and we've also done a piece on how to organize your B-roll with Sean Morton. And it really helped us to change the way we approach our videos. Everything we've been doing up until now has, has really been fairly basic. And this is helping us to level up and get to that next level. So there's actually a link in the video description. The first thousand people to join are going to get a month's free trial. And during that time, you'll be able to access all of the content, all of the courses that are on there. And you'll really be able to learn at your own pace. There's so many different videos out there on, on how to sort of learn new skills. It can be really difficult sometimes to find professionally curated and produced content that enables you to learn at the level that you want to and allows you to dip in and out as and when you want. So don't forget to take a look at the link in the video description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching this video, guys. Stay safe.